Hey everyone, uh, I'm making a little uh, garden tour that is never little, but uh, and um, I make also a harvest. I, I already harvest some stuff, I'll put some picture and um, attach a little video at the end of this one to show you what I harvest. And uh, I'm gonna show you quickly what is growing right now, what is changing from the last time I did um, a video around the garden and uh, we'll see what, what's going on and uh, very quickly down this way we have um, the bean tepee that is uh, overgrown a bit you can see the beans that I planted from the bottom they went all the way up and now all together they are actually coming down this way and there's quite some beans uh, lots of different varieties uh, this fall when I'm gonna these are all dry beans uh, this fall I'm gonna pick them all shell them and make different jars with all the different uh, kind of beans and see there are already some basically dry I'm just hoping that uh, I have a couple of chipmunks around here one or two squirrel maybe I hope they're not gonna go steal them but I have plenty and I'm sure it's gonna be fine uh, so here morning glories they are doing very nice now we are around uh, I think noon so one o'clock so they are already dying off uh, what's different uh, uh, there's the butter beans that are growing first year I'm growing them so uh, I have to, to look up how to harvest them, but basically they need to be swelled up and then you get the, the you shell them and get the beans inside. Uh, also, it was the first year that I was growing zinnias and uh, I love them. So I think next year I'm going to get way more varieties, different colors and maybe make a whole area. Uh, then on this side the melons I'm gonna have a video about them so we can skip them I remove all the garlic uh, from this bed and um, I have figs they are turning I keep picking every once in a while one uh, I have uh, the gore tunnel that is not a tunnel anymore but is a cave and I have to show you because I love how it turns out you see it's like a little cave and there's all these miniature gourds pumping how you want to call them and there's like tons of them i don't know what i'm gonna do with them i don't know they, they might be even edible but i think they're just used as ornamental and uh, the kids that can come inside here it's like basically four feet long by three feet and now down there you can't even pass anymore because the, the vines are closing it up I'm just keeping it open this side and uh, let's see if I can go inside but it's basically it's all covered in vines and full of these cool little gourds um, I was hoping for more varieties I can see only a couple of uh, them uh, but it's all right and uh, I'm getting now it's the end of the season you can see uh, I, I, try to keep up with cleaning the powdery mildew but it's really not even worth to, to spend too much time because uh, it's just a, a, a lost fight it's just what it is uh, at this time of the year another thing that is uh, growing right now it's the sunflower that I have to turn around to show you that they are right up there and there's uh, this big one right there and one there in the back that is basically there open and then I think I have uh, six or seven growing this little patch I might grow more next year but again yeah we use the seeds it would be more for an ornamental reason that I grow some flowers and uh, melons we're gonna have the video about it uh, on this side, uh, let's see, ah, I can show you, 
what happened when you don't come in the garden for a week. Huh? I already harvest most of the stuff, uh, but I'm gonna leave this small little zucchini in here because now it's way past. You see my hand and I have big hands. This is just, I think I'm gonna leave it here and see what it does, turn like into a pumpkin or something. Uh, Brussels sprouts are right there. I'm gonna have to check for the cabbage moth because I see there's some damage. So we'll see with that. Uh, I might, uh, one thing that uh, I, I have no problem using is a BT that uh, many of you probably already know. It's uh, pretty safe to use for uh, both environment and uh, food wise too. It's an organic, uh, it's something, you know, that you can use even if you were like an organic grower so and it works very well with that kind of um, uh, no worms how you call them caterpillars but we'll see here we have the eggplants finally growing the tomatoes they gave all that to give and uh, I'm gonna have to check uh, the corn because uh, it might be ready any time. Uh, you can see there's quite decent size, few smaller ones, but uh, soon I'm gonna start to basically slowly peel off and see how the, the kernels inside look. Um, and that's it, all the rest it keeps going, you know, slow peas. You're gonna see what I harvest. And you can see how bad it looks, my long because uh, this summer we had three days of rain and i'm not going to, to uh, water the lawn and and you can see how it dry it is these are my pumpkins and crazy that they are already orange at what we are like middle of august towards the end when these are supposed to, to be ripe for like end of september but I'm sure they're gonna be fine for Halloween, hopefully, because that's why I grow them mostly, for the kids to, to uh, carve. And uh, I have all different varieties, the, the classic uh, Jack on Lantern, I have this one that, I still, I'm not sure. I thought it was a Delicia. It doesn't look like that on the picture that I saw. So I know I have blue Hubbard that they're actually getting pretty big. Ah, yeah, I see it. I'm gonna show you. If I can pass. Right here, there's the blue hubbard. And it's getting nice big sides. I got one here, one back there. And down there, you can see those look, they look like bananas kind. Those are the Georgia candy roasters. And more pumpkins right there and on this line another whole bunch of them and let me take you quickly to that section of the garden that I saw today I'm quite happy on the corn that's the glass gem corn ornamental I love the plants first of all it's like huge very tall so even if I didn't get any I just like the look of it but it's the first year I go. I don't know how it works, this corn, but I can see it now some uh, of the hair of the cobs poking out from uh, close to the stem. I, I have no idea what's going on, but I know it takes a long time, this corn, to, to mature. Maybe right there I see a cob forming. And uh, even here. So the cobs are forming. Up here there's, you know, the pollen, how you call it, from the tassels. So hopefully I'm gonna get something. Um, I pick a few espalette peppers to make like paprika. And all the rest looks pretty fine. Few plants, they are basically dead. And uh, even the sorrel here, I'm gonna have uh, uh, 
when I'm gonna clean up everything, this one is gonna come down back to the ground and it's coming back every year. It looks very nice at the end of the season. At the, no, sorry, at the beginning of the season. It's a red vein sorrel. We use it in salad, um, but even if you don't use it, it's just worth having it because it's one of the most beautiful plants to have in the, in the garden. And uh, huh, this one almost looks like peanut. I don't know if you ever grew peanut, but it really looks like a peanut plant. Huh. I tried to grow peanut. I think I got out of one, I planted 20 and one plant actually got to a decent size. And when it was time, you have to, to dig down because the peanuts form underground. And I think I had one husk with like one unripe peanut. But it, it's in, not impossible, but I would have to, to grow them like uh, with some kind of cover, increase a bit the temperature. So maybe one day in the future, I might give it another try. Uh, I really like, I really like the, the deal, how it looks. Even if it gets, oh, there you go. I think, what is going on here? There's a ladybug going after something. Because ladybugs, they are like uh, predators that you really want them in your garden. And I can see under there, there's uh, maybe aphids. There's something in the ladybugs is all over them. So good job. And here's the leaks that I left from last year to go to flower and then on the containers it's basically almost all done uh, the only thing new it's the mache this is a salad um, it's a variety that uh, comes from Italy because I remember growing up in Italy the mache was uh, or corn salad for uh, if you know it as corn salad uh, it was way thicker than the one that I find here. I try to grow every year. This is a weed. I try to, to grow every year different seeds and different variety, but I never got that. So I order directly from Italy now. Uh, this one hopefully is the one that I like. And uh, it's really, really thick and is one of my favorite uh, letters. This one can go, they have to go actually into summer this was uh, a lettuce that i put for fall but with this temperature it's like it's very good for melons and uh, peppers eggplants but for like lettuces uh, it really usually by this time it would be way colder and the lettuce would be perfect and now instead it's just it keeps being like close to 30 in the days and even here i have like a this is kind of a radicchio uh, an Italian green that uh, it makes like a shoot from the center and you, you, you harvest basically the, the young shoot and you eat them like you make a little salad on the side kind of bitter so you have to like you know like the radicchio and dive that kind of thing but with this heat uh, I'm not gonna even get anything and even if I get you probably don't want to use it because it would be super super bitter and uh, here, I don't know if I ever spoke about, it's the tiger nuts. Uh, now that they go a lot into health store, uh, you find them there uh, called uh, earth almond. And um, basically it looks like a grass. It spreads a lot, that's why I kept it in the container. And then at the end of the season, you basically dig down and there should be all these uh, nuts uh, below the ground that you have to clean and then you eat them like almonds. And that's about it for today. Uh, that's just an update on what's growing and I'm gonna show you now what I harvest and maybe later today or tomorrow I'm gonna make a, a video about the melons, talking more about the melons, what they're doing, how they're doing. Take care, I'll see you. Right, so this is the harvest for uh, Saturday the 18th of August. So we got a um, bunch of basil to do paste or to freeze. Pickles, some of them are kind of 
overgrown. This is what happened when I don't get around for a week and stuff get a bit on the large side like this zucchini and uh, but it's still gonna be fine uh, so we have some zucchini we have a kohlrabi right there uh, crookneck squash that is the first year that they grow so I don't really know how to use it we'll find out some chamomile then here I have a bunch of hespelet pepper that you do like a paprika kind of powder with it fantastic way better than anything in the store some beans tomatoes we have uh, the cherry tomatoes to freeze for winter for the spaghetti and here we have salad tomatoes up there is the San Marzano we make some pizza sauce with them uh, then we have the cucumbers always too many cucumber but what can you do and here we have uh, two different potatoes that we harvest so it's two buckets one bucket we got the um, alta blush i think it's called and this is gold rush uh, one this is supposed to be early and this is middle season but i don't know to me they look kind of uh, the same size but uh, and back there i'm gonna also open it up and take some picture we have a cantaloupe this was the plant i bought at the store that i grew into into the uh, fabric pot so it's like an hybrid kind of cantaloupe uh, i don't know i'm not very happy about that plant but we'll talk more on another video just about melons and that's the first uh, um, noir de carm uh, melon that uh, i'm picking and i'll take some picture and let you know how it is Another thing that I picked today are a bunch of shallot that I put on a rack below here to dry up. So here they are. These I think uh, they're not, I could have left them in to get bigger probably, but uh, uh, it's uh, the Brune, uh, the variety. The Brune, the Brune, and uh, they're pretty good. First year, uh, I think I got the seeds from uh, uh, maybe MI Gardner. Uh, I don't remember, but first year I grow shallots. Usually I just grow uh, onions, leeks, uh, but uh, they did pretty well. I could have let some. You see, I got some on the small size, but uh, I'm still fine. So that's for today, and uh, I'll show you some picture of the melon. I'm gonna touch them at the back of the video. Take care.